Hello, here's Verla Harrell again, just coming to, just to share something with you. You know, since people have been watching my videos, I have some people that haven't painted before, but they have a desire to paint, so they've asked me to let them know what are the supplies that are good for them to start with. So I'm going to do some minimum things. Now, through my other videos, you've heard me watch, talk about other things like that ought light, some of the other things that, that really bit would be neat for you to add to your supplies. But these are going to be some of your basic supplies. Now, you see me looking through to you with these crazy glasses. I can see you so good with these eyes now because I had cataract surgery. But to see close, I haven't had my eyes checked, so that'll be done in a few weeks. So the next time you see me, maybe I'll be with my real glasses. So for right now, for me to see, I've got to look over the top of these jiggers so I can see you. So, oh uh, well, I'll tell you what. Um, this watercolor journey has been really special for me. And one of the things I want to encourage you with is it's really important to have good supplies, good quality supplies. If you're going to try to work in your kitchen and you want to fix a lovely meal for your family or some friends coming to your place, you know what? You need some good supplies. And if you don't, oh, it's not going to be first class. So why not be first class from the start? So I have learned some things that I think are better. So I'm going to share those with you. I have a sheet here that lists Cheap Joe's um, telephone number and that's where I order most of my supplies. Most of my supplies are from there. And so these are, th are the colors and here's the little palette. Now I'll tell you what, this is an awesome palette to get started with and Hopefully you can find one at an antique store or a thrift store. Oh, maybe even a garage sale. But then it's good to mark all around the color that's on here because when I'm talking about on a video what colors I mixed, like purposely I put new gamboge and cobalt blue across from each other because those are the ones that I mix so much. And this is one of my students' things. So you see all these little colors that they've mixed. It's an awesome thing to mix colors in. So you always want to do porcelain. Don't try to do plastic. Plastic just does not, what it happens with plastic is it, it, um, it's, it makes a shade of the color on the plastic and you can't get it out. On the porcelain, you can clean that and make that as white as can be. And you go in there with your little damped Kleenex and just sharpen those up. So, but another thing you can do, sometimes we have to mix some other colors that we don't have room on there. We're mixing too many colors. So, you can just use a little, well, this is little uh, Corel dish and you look all the colors we're mixing on there. So you can mix it on there. Now, if you want, these little things are neat too. And they're just little tulip things that you can put different colors in there so you can mix that way. So there's a variety of ways, but you can do a lot with this, an awful lot. And then the thing about mixing the colors, the reason I've chosen these specific colors is because most of these are transparent. Now, they're semi-transparent colors, and then there's opaque colors. Opaque colors, you don't see through them at all. They're just solid. And I just, I use very little of opaque colors. And then there, there's gouache, and I have gouache paints, but you know what? I don't hardly use them because they are just solid. No transparent at all. And some people paint just with gouache. So, you know, if that's your choice, you can try that. But what I really like is the transparent colors. And then I use two paints. Now, I have to show you my little, my little box. It's really good to keep your paints. I got this from, um, from Target, and I don't know if they still carry it. But I have several of these, and I keep specific colors in them. But see, these are the... These are the 37 millimeter here, and then here's just a little 15 millimeter. And when you're getting first started, you may want to just get 15 millimeter, but I would encourage you to get the 37 millimeter of the 
cobalt blue and the new gambos because those are the colors you just use the most so it, it's good to keep them in the little box because it keeps them sealed it just keeps them longer and keeps them sealed so they will last longer now the other thing is you can use um paper towels and you know a lot of them really want to use visa uh viva viva but I just used a bounty because it's cheaper and just use the side that doesn't have the design on it and you can blot with that and then you use the Kleenex. You've seen me different times roll up the Kleenex and use it that way so you can just use a Kleenex. Now at, at another time I had talked to you about your paper and so there is such a variety of paper. Now these little, you can get these in all different sizes but this is a block and see you see up here at the top see how you can get that you can paint on here and then when you're done with it you take a little knife in there and you just pull it around and you peel it off then you paint another one so you can get these in all different sizes and i still like using arches 140 pound is what i try to use most now you can do um the the 300 pound, you can do 300 pound. The reason I don't like 300 pound is it really soaks up the paint. You will use double the amount of paint if you use 300 pound. And the other thing about it, it won't buckle the same on you. So you can just put tape around it. And uh, if it does buckle some, then you can turn it over on the other side and wet it and then put um, books on it and get a thing to lay flat again. But but you can do that with 300 pound. But this is one that I encourage you to get your gator board. Now, if you look at this, see how thick it is? You can get that real thin, but the real thin stuff will buckle on you crazy. And even this will buckle on you if when you get done painting, you always lay it totally flat, totally flat. Because if you set that up, and just put it on a little easel or something, the thing's gonna warp on you. Now you'll see this. Uh, I have start, I can't wait to paint this for you because I love barns. So I've drawn the barn on here. That's all I've drawn on. But what I'm go gonna do, oh, I'm gonna go back just a minute because I've, I've gotta tell you this. The reason I use this board is because I wet this real good on both sides and I talked to you about that earlier but I want to remind you then you need then you need a staple gun that's going to totally lay flat because after it's wet on both sides before you ever draw or you paint on it you're going to staple all the way around it and that'll keep it from being warped so it's important to have that kind of a staple gun because they don't all they don't all do that. And then I've got to talk to you about the well here, this. Now I started that, I've got to finish this. This is my barn. Well, and these things are really neat. And you'll get those on the internet. Once in a while you'll find them at a store, but they're, I've kind of had a hard time finding them for some of my other students. But this barn I'm gonna do, that's all I've drawn on there. But in this foreground, I'm gonna do some of this grass stuff. But over here, right, right in the foreground, I have this picture of these sunflowers. So I didn't draw them on there because I'm gonna paint the sunflowers first and then I'll paint the other stuff around it. So you don't have to draw it all on. Oh, and then you know when you're measuring, this is one of the best things for measuring your paper because the paper, if you go and get at, at uh, Hobby Lobby, uh, you can get the 140 pound arches and so then it's like um, 28 by 30, I think the size of it. And so you can use this to cut the sizes that you want because you're gonna wanna cut it up. Now, when you cut it up, make sure that you put a little X in every little section that you paint or that you cut on so that you do the front side of it. I know you can paint on both sides of the arches paper, but I prefer to paint on one side purposely and it's always the one that's a little bit rougher now if you're doing the hot press then it's not rough so if if it if the package that it comes in it's the top part i mark it with a little x and i paint on that side so that's just my preference and here's one of my little dishes that i just put water in and it's even good to use two dishes because the one dish you can 
rinse your brush in and then that one you just uh, put your water in and then get on your palette. It helps to keep your palette clean if you've rinsed your brush first. Now I have to tell you these brushes uh, are so special to me and the reason they are is because they hold so much water. Some brushes you'll be painting and you'll have to just keep getting back into the water in your paint because it won't hold a whole bunch of brushes. On this I can roll it in my palette and just get a whole bunch of paint in there and so that's the reason I like it. Now I'll tell you what I, I use the and I have this on the list that I use the um, the square brush the three quarter inch and then this is a number eight and then uh, a number four and a number two and that's the main thing I use I have to tell you I don't even know these two maybe three of them would you believe it all three of those you can still see letters on my big one all three of those the words are totally they're totally worn off and this number eight the point is still good this is probably about 10 years old and and it's not a terrible expensive brush they're uh, they, they are just incredible. Those silver, black, velvet brushes is what they are. And I absolutely love them. Now, when you get done painting, you always lay it flat. Don't ever put it in your little glass standing up until it's totally dry. Because if you do, you're gonna let the water go down in here and it will damage it. And I, you know, I told you before, and I'm gonna tell you again, you don't share your brushes with you don't share your toothbrush so don't cherry share your watercolor brushes they're just yours and then I really encourage you to get a holder for your brushes because if you just put them in a box and you bring them and they lean up against that it's gonna it's gonna squish them and so at I don't even put it in the holder till they're totally dry but you keep them in this and then you can carry them to go somewhere else to paint or something. But it's really important that you don't get them squished. So it it pays you, I think this is about $16. I think that's what, what it is. And it's just worth every bit of it. Now, if you're doing oils, you can get this in a bigger one. So it's good to protect your brushes. I've had two other um, holders for brushes and I'm sorry they didn't work good and the little flap would come down on them and it's not good for your brushes you know I, I want to help you remember this this is a real common problem with students when they first start to paint and I, I have to tell you I have to repeatedly remind them but it is so important so I do remind them so I would like to tell you that when you start doing your painting you'll have a tendency to put your brush there and then just leave it in the water if you do that you're gonna bend those bristles and that's not a good thing every time you put your paint you're just pick it up and lay it down do not ever leave it in your water ever 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 and so if you're gonna have to use another brush pick that up rinse it out and lay it down and just pick up another brush and put it in there and then if you used another brush you're going to keep doing that because if you don't you will ruin your brushes and uh, there's no sense in you having to keep buying brushes because these points if you really take care of them they will just keep so long it's just crazy how how good they are they just are so good so just remember not to leave your brushes in the water okay you'll be further along on your brushes if you do that just lay them down okay I shared with you sometimes about this ink pen you'll see this picture over here of the little gal that was a, a thing we did at the art guild and we had a model and I just did that just with ink. That was a 20 minute thing. I love doing that. Your ink stuff is good. You can use your ink on top of your other watercolors. Now this one's really, really permanent. And it's it's a Micron and it, it's an archival pen. There are so many pens that will tell you they're permanent, but I'm sorry, I've tried some other ones and they still would smear. But you can put this on your watercolor and then you can when it's totally totally dry you can put paint over it and it still 
it's not going to smear on you. So it's well worth to get these, and they usually come in uh, three in a set. Um, I think it's a two, three, and a five, and they come in bigger sets too, but two, three, and a five is mainly what I use. And then, you know, I have talked about the little scrubbers, the little Fritz scrubbers from Cheap Joe's, and I try to encourage you not to use these if you're going to paint something over it again, but like the last painting I did, and we needed to just soften up the stuff on the path, you, that's a real neat way to soften it up. And then you know how much I like these uh, these sticks. And when you're first starting, just start with your watercolor paints. You're fine. You can do an awful lot. But if you decide, oh, I've got to try some more stuff, you might want the Farber Castle watercolor pencils. And then these are the watercolor sticks. Now you can buy the watercolor sticks from Cheap Joe's individually. But in the long run, I think it pays you to buy a, a box and I think mine are for I think it's 36 that I have for for my and I've just used because you can mix these and you've seen me do that lots you can mix them you get a lot of stuff from it and I'm sure you've got an old toothbrush this you'll find use for this oh I'm gonna tell you something you know what when I get to painting oh I kind of lose track of time and so I've learned that it's better for me to move something, go move my legs, go get a drink of water, just something in between. So it's nothing for me to set my timer for 30 minutes or an hour and then go do a little bit something and then come back to it. For one thing, you need to take time to set up your picture and look at it. Oh, I have to show you this because when you do your tube paint and you're gonna put it on your palette, one of the things you want to do when you when you take this off the paint and you put it in your palette use this little scraper thing really this is a palette knife so if you do palette painting particularly in oil then then you would use it for that but this i just scrape it off the top it'll keep your nice top clean and uh, you know you want to keep it as clean as you can because you're going to paint with those for a long time now i've got to tell you when you start to get your little um your little pencil sharpener for your watercolor pencils look at this see the two holes there's two holes there's a smaller one and there's a bigger one i use that bigger one mostly and it's just better you can also get these in the, these stainless things in just the two two holes but i really like having that bigger one and you can you can turn it so that you're just sharpening just the point up there and it just works so good and then you've seen me talk about this uh <laughs> this little eraser oh my it does get dirty so the best thing for cleaning your eraser is just a little emery board. It's awesome for cleaning your eraser. Well, I'll tell you what, I hope I've given you some ideas of things you can do. And you know, when we had our Chinese food this week, guess what came in our little, our little can, our little cookie. It said, enthusiasm is the greatest asset in the world. It beats money, power and influence huh so whatever you're doing you're going to help maybe a neighbor you're going to help your grandkids maybe somebody else that just needs some encouragement ah oh, you know what enthusiasm and your caring about them will just do worlds in somebody's life so be who you are share who you are you've got lots inside of you huh share it you can make somebody happy you can make a difference in somebody's life today i'm looking forward to seeing you next time if you enjoyed the video give me a like and i'd appreciate you subscribing to my channel thank you